Today we're going to cover how to change one single item in a WordPress menu, particularly using the Divi Builder. A lot of the time you'll have a menu like this one, pretty standard, about us, why we serve. And this top right one, work with us today, is your primary call to action. But as you can see, it's been given no larger visual priority than the rest. And unfortunately, uh, within the uh, Divi menu module that we're using here, there's not a way to change individual items to be any more prominent. You can only style them um, as bulk. So you can change all menu items, um, such as the menu text color to be all green. You can make them all bold, uh, You know, do things like that, but you are unable to change uh, just a single one. So the way to go about that is, this is an example CTA menu, and we have that open in another tab right here. This is under appearance and menus. And if you go to the example CTA menu and hit select or whatever yours is called, the trick once this page refreshes is to go under screen options and make sure CSS classes is checked. That will give us this little configuration option here, CSS classes. And what we want to do is we'll call it top nav CTA button, and then we'll hit save and go back to our sandbox page. Go down here and the settings for the overall page. This is an example header on a sandbox page, but if you're building a header for the site, uh, you'd probably be in the theme builder. Uh, you'd edit the header uh, specifically, and then you'd go to the page settings for the header itself. That way, uh, these settings would appear on all pages that the header appears. Regardless, wherever you're editing your header or your menu, go to the gear icon, advanced, and custom CSS. And then when we're in the CSS here, we'll get the period to indicate that it is a class. Paste that in there. Open up a left brace and the right brace will automatically close. And then what I like to do is go background and then we'll just start with a gray that I know offhand just to get the hex color editor started. And then we can choose kind of this charcoaly gray here. And then we can go color, start with the white. And nothing's happening there, but it may be because we haven't refreshed for um, the WordPress menu information to be synced over. So we'll just save our work and then we'll hit refresh to make sure that all the class information and the updated menu items will sync over to this menu bar. Excellent. And then what's a good practice to do as well? Um, we can't click on this because I've actually brought this up with negative margin and this logo is in the way. So all we have to do is go here and just get that opened and we can go back to the desktop view. Um, one good thing to do would be to uh, put an ID on this top menu. So we will call it uh, top main menu and I'm just gonna throw a two on there because I believe I'm actually hiding the real menu for this website um, for testing purposes. And so I'm just gonna put a two on there. And then in front of my CSS rule, I can just put the hashtag that in front of it because that's the ID. And so then we can hit check mark on that and save. And then we're seeing some overlapping text here. Uh, I believe that's actually the real top menu that's getting in the way um, that hasn't been hidden from the page. So I'm actually just going to um, display none that. And so we'll just go to hashtag main header, it looks like is in the way. And so we'll just display none that and get it out of our way. And you may have this too uh, when working on sort of a sandbox page. Open the right left brace, display none. And that's how you get that out of your way. And so now we can work purely with our source. So we can see that the background color has applied, but the uh, inner color has not. And it's probably because we're targeting, there's an LI tag surrounding it and an A tag inside for the actual link. And so we can target the A tag itself and we can see we got a little closer there, it flashed, but not quite. So we can also try adding important. And there, now the white is applied only to that item though. And if we had any other CSS rules applied to these other ones, such as if we had top menu two and we just wanted to apply to all LI elements and the A's inside, and we wanted them to be color red, important. We can do that too, but notice these are very similar rules, but because this one is listed second after this one, 
And because it's slightly more specific, having this extra class in there, then it will override the red. So this will be separate from those above. And so we'll keep the red there just for example purposes, and now we'll make this button look better. So here's some styles that I like to use. Now that we got the background color figured out and the text color is fixed, now we can just add some padding to make this look more like a button. So uh, we'll do just the padding top bottom of 10 pixels and left right of, let's say 12 pixels. See how that looks. That's pretty good. And we'll cap that off. We'll go border radius and we'll say 10 pixels. That's looking nice. And ah, Divi does this sometimes, which is very unfortunate. If you don't hit the check mark very often, sometimes Divi will just refresh and you'll lose some of your code. It's quite frustrating sometimes. You may want to edit your CSS outside of the Divi window and put it back in. Um, so our red text went away. I won't bring that back because it's not really important for our purposes here, but I will recreate the rules that we were creating there. So we'll go adding 10 pixels, 12 pixels, and border radius 10 pixels. And then I'll hit the check mark right away. And now I'll go back in now that that's actually been saved. And it's always good to hit that save button in the bottom right uh, a little more often than you need to. Then to make sure these are all aligned nicely, I like to use Flexbox whenever I can. Um, I'm already using Flex um, on that particular section to get it to display right because layout only gives you left align. So I just went to advanced custom CSS, display flex and justify content flex end, which means move it to the end of that square, which happens to be the far right side. Um, so I'm actually just going to, since it's already flexed, I'm just going to go align items and center. And we may need to import into that. Now, sometimes that isn't enough to fix it as much as flex is lovely. So we're going to test that now in our um, live page and see what setting is preventing us from aligning those. It may be some rogue padding. Uh, it may be a flex rule that we're not using. Um, so the button is tall and then, ah, see, so each of these buttons is a lot taller than it needs to be and it's adding some padding below it. And so let's just see why that is. So there's a padding bottom of eight on each of those. And so that would be why they're not aligning very well. So we'll just go into this rule here that's adding the padding bottom to each of those. And we can actually just copy this rule verbatim go back into here, into the gear, advanced, custom CSS, and then I would probably want this to appear above this rule here, because this is more of a prerequisite rule. So we'll just give some space, paste that one, add our barriers, and we'll say padding, specifically padding bottom, zero pixels. And because we're working with a theme, usually just good to add important. You can see that shrinks it up, uh, because we added a more aggressive rule than this one here, uh, being that we added important, we need to add important to our A there. And so now the padding is less aggressive for us, but we still have these alignment issues. So we'll hit save, go to sandbox, refresh, and let's see why these aren't aligning quite yet. So now they're still the same height technically, so flex is doing its job, but we don't want these to be um, particularly this height. So let's see what these do. Padding bottom is now fixed. And there we go. So it turns out the rule was on the list items. This was just already put in place by the theme. And it was one that said to do align items stretch, which made them the exact same height as everything else, which is great until you want uh, different heighted items. And so I just changed that to center by scrolling around, seeing how it looked. You can see how it changes it live. And when we choose center, then these align perfectly with our new work with us today button. So we'll just borrow this rule here, noting that we need to do align items center. And it's always good just to double check that you uh, aren't making it more complicated than it needs to be. So we'll see if there's a line item Active menu link, menu link, menu link might be all we need. So maybe we'll just try going align items center and see if that, nope, okay, worth a try. And instead we'll just go to advanced, go here, and we will 
add it, slip it right in here as a line items center. Perfect. And there we have it. We have a Divi menu module using a regular menu, but one with a special custom CSS class. They're all aligned nicely. This is, it's got its own custom styles and we can use this on any page we want. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below and check us out at choosemaple.space if you want any assistance with your own WordPress website. Otherwise, have a fantastic day.